Okay then, so we've seen that we've registered a service worker and we've listened to the install event. The next step is that the service worker becomes active, it fires an active event, and then the service worker can then listen for things like fetch events in the future. So this is the next stage. The service worker becomes active and it fires the active event. Now this happens automatically the first time a service worker is registered then installed inside a browser. But thereafter, every time we change the file and it's reinstalled, we have to do something else to activate the service worker, thereby firing this event. So like we've seen in the previous tutorial, when we change a service worker and it reinstalls, that service worker goes into waiting. We saw that very briefly, but I'll show you again in a minute. So let's return to the code now and try listening for this active event. Okay then, so the first thing I want to do is unregister the current service worker that we have installed in the browser. Now to do that, go to application at the top, then service workers on the left, and then press unregister. And that is us essentially deleting the service worker from the browser because we want a clean slate. We don't want a service worker there to begin with. So the next thing I want to do is listen for the activate event inside the service worker itself. So underneath the rest, I'll do another comment saying activate service worker. And this isn't actually activating the service worker. This is just listening for the activate event. So let's now say self and then add event listener. And we want to listen for the activate event. And then when this occurs, we're going to fire a callback function again, taking in the event object, which this time represents the activate event. And then inside this callback function, all we'll do is say console.log service worker has been activated. Okay then. So the first time that we load this up, in a browser because there's not a service worker there already and it's the first time essentially that we're installing and registering the service worker after it's been installed the activate event is automatically going to fire and the service worker will become active and that is because like i said we unregistered the service worker before so there's no service worker there at the minute so it automatically becomes active so if i save this now and go to the console over here we can see this service worker Inside the console, we can see installed, registered, and activated. And by the way, the order of this registered thing right here cannot be guaranteed. Sometimes it's at the top, sometimes at the bottom. You can't guarantee the order of this. But always, first it's installed, then it's activated. So we can see now it's been installed first, then activated, right? Automatically. Now, if I refresh the page, then we can see the service worker is registered as normal. That always happens. However, we don't see the installed event and we don't see the activated event. And that's because first of all, we've not changed the service worker file. So because we've not changed it, we don't need to reinstall it. And obviously because we've not reinstalled anything, there's nothing else to be reactivated. We already have an active service worker. Now, if we go to the application, we can see this service worker is still activated and running. Now that if I go over here and I make a change to this file, so I'm just going to say activate event because that makes more sense. I'm going to save this. We've changed the file. Therefore, it should be reinstalled, right? So if we save it, come back to the browser, we see registered and installed, but we do not see activated. That's because we already have a service worker, the previous version before we made a change to it, activated already in the browser. Remember, the browser does not automatically activate our new service worker version and replace the old one with it. And that is because the old one was the one that loaded with the app when it fires in the browser. And if the browser just changed it while we have the app open, it could cause breaking changes to the app and that's not a good user experience. So in the application tab, we can see that we still have the old one activated, this green one, and we have a new service worker waiting to activate. So now this is in waiting and this new service worker will only become active after all instances of browser tabs or the app itself on a phone are closed and then reopened. So we have to close the app down completely, including any tab that might have it open up here. And then we have to reopen it. And then at that point, it should become active. So I'm going to demo that. I'm going to just take this and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to open up a new tab then close this one so all instances have closed down now i'm going to paste it in here press enter i'm going to go to inspect and go to the console and now we can see installed and activated again right here 
So now it's been activated again. We can see there's no longer one in waiting because that has been activated. OK, so then as a user, we would always have to close the app instances and reopen it. I mean, they're not really meant to know about service workers and to know that that's what they have to do. But just naturally, they close apps and they reopen them. And then this is all happening in the background to update our service workers in their applications. But as developers, it's a bit of a pain having to close all instances all the time and then reopen them or likewise on a phone, having to close it down, reopen it. So there are a few shortcuts for us as developers to do this. The first one I'll show you in a second. Let me just change this. I'll take away this comment so that it reinstalls. And then we should see in a second a new service worker waiting to activate. Now, instead of closing down the tab and reopening it, all we could do is say skip waiting. And now this becomes active. OK, we might have to refresh the page again so that this works properly. But now it's active. We don't have to close down the tabs. The other option, if I make a change again, I'm just going to undo this, press save and come back over here. So we see the service worker in waiting again, the new one. Another option is just to say update on reload. So now every time we refresh, it's going to make it active. We don't have to close it down and reopen it. We just refresh. And this is good because now if I make a change, if I delete this again and press save, then the dev server automatically refreshes for me and the new service worker is active now. So that's a nice little option right there. Speeds things up for us as developers. So I tend to keep this checked, but I'll let you know if I uncheck it, if I want to show you something different in the future. So then all of this might seem a little bit complex at first, but the more we work with service workers, the more this becomes obvious and second nature. And this cycle of a service worker is really important to get your head around. If you don't understand this, you're going to face problems when you're developing PWAs. So what should we do inside this callback anyway when something has been activated? Well, this is another area that we could do some cache management. And again, I'm going to show you all of that later on. First of all, what I'd like to do is take a side step in the next video and show you how we can audit this app and see how much of a progressive web app it is in Google's eyes. And we'll do that in the next video.